trip to Oxford. So Ole Miss, obviously, this is going to be a game in which people are eyeing the Texas A&M defense, which is rock solid. Got to be a top five unit in the country. I don't care what the stats say, just in terms of talent, execution, all of it. It's a top five to ten unit in the country, and we know that Lane Kiffin can scheme and match up as well as anybody on the offensive side of the ball, and he's got one of the very best in Matt Corral. He's a bit nicked up. He wasn't able to run the football against Liberty the way they typically run Matt Corral. He stayed in the pocket but still delivered for 324 yards. So it's it's going to be quite the X's and O's and talent matchup between Texas A&M's defense and Ole Miss's offense. Yeah, to your point, the numbers actually back you up too. I mean, A&M's up to number two in, the, in terms of scoring defense in the country uh, behind Georgia, which has just been on another – level this season defensively you're right it's going to be a it's going to be an intriguing matchup and really interested to see because this game wasn't played last year and with COVID and all that happened this was the game that um was canceled on on one side on the A&M side first and then wasn't able to be rescheduled and so really interested to see how how A&M is able to slow down a Lane Kiffin offense and I think they're going to need to score they're going to need to be better offensively than they were last week um but yeah it's it's gonna be it's gonna come down to getting pressure and um i think going on the road this is this is obviously the biggest test on the road that a&m's had so far but i don't i see why i wouldn't be able to to travel the road with them and just with with the way they've been playing um the formula they have um it's going to be a really interesting test on, on how saturday night goes the SEC Western Division sizes up like this with a month to play. Alabama at five and one, Texas A&M at four and two, Auburn at three and two, Ole Miss at three and two. The intriguing part and the key in all this is that obviously Texas A&M has that win against Alabama head to head. Of course, Texas A&M is going to be out of it if they lose this one to Ole Miss. Uh, they can take care of the Rebels this week. Uh, they've already taken care of Auburn head to head, and then they're going to be. <laughs> rooting for the Auburn Tigers like nobody's business on the last weekend in November. So Auburn's got a puncher shot in that game. Uh, certainly Alabama's been susceptible. We saw that uh, this past Saturday against LSU, uh, a game that they held uh, LSU out of the end zone a few times when the Tigers had a shot late, but um, held on for a 20-14 to 14 win. So, you know, Aggie fans can dream a little bit. They can, and I mean, I my colleague Josh Pate brought up a good point this weekend that really A&M was one LSU drive away from realistically controlling their own destiny in terms in terms of the SEC championship game. Now, Alabama was able to hold on. Um, Auburn's going to need to play a lot better offensively when they, when they host Alabama, but I, I think they can give Alabama some trouble defensively, especially – with the problems that Alabama's had along the offensive line, I think that's going to be an interesting matchup. But for Bray and M, yeah, this is kind of the one of the big hurdles left is to get past Ole Miss. And um, I think I think when you look at A and M though, they'll take in a heartbeat right now, regardless of how the next three weeks play out. If they if they're able to do what they need to do and finish ten and two, um, We'll take it and be concerned the way the SEC slate started with the loss to Arkansas and Mississippi State uh, to turn around in the fashion that they have gives them a lot of momentum. I think regardless of whether it's enough to get to Atlanta or not is remains to be seen. Um, but they've they've certainly put themselves in a position to play for to play some extremely meaningful games in November and it starts this this week. Um, LSU is going to be another challenging one when they go to Death Valley in a couple weeks. Uh, but yeah, there's just some huge games on the road now. And we'll pay some respect to Sam Pittman and company. They do get their shot at uh, Alabama as well. And we've seen on occasion, most notably against Texas A&M also against Texas. And they kind of righted the ship this past weekend against Mississippi state and getting a win at Arkansas. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty capable football team. Sure, they're going to be a huge underdog against Bama, but uh, between Auburn and Arkansas, two pretty good football teams that will have a shot at the tide and taking them down to clear the way for Texas A&M. And as Andrew we've seen kind of this during this college football season already, we've seen plenty of surprises come come our way just at, at, all, at all points. So, you know, it's, it's just one of those things you've got to play the game. And I think that was the message from Jimbo Fisher this week when he was asked, you know, you have a lot to play for. Do you even look at the standings and do you worry about what's going on around the 
rest of the SEC and it said it doesn't matter if we don't beat Ole Miss. So that's kind of the attitude that they're taking is if they don't beat Ole Miss and beat LSU, then it's not really going to matter what else happens. So, you know, you just got to kind of play the games and see where the chips fall at, at the end of the at the end of the month. 